to some power. You know, three to the first is three, three to the second is nine, three to the third is 27, three to the fourth is 81, three to the fifth is 243, two to the sixth is 729, three to the seventh is 2187, three to the eighth is 6561. Okay, but if we look at the ones digit, we have three, nine, seven, one, three, nine, seven, one. So it repeats every fourth number, three, nine, seven, one. So there are four numbers in the pattern, three, nine, seven, and one. Now if we take the 371 and divide by four, because there's four numbers in a pattern, we end up with, do that in the calculator, 371 divided by 4, we get 92.75, 92.75, or 92 and 3 fourths, or 92 remainder 3. Okay, so our remainder is 3, so that's the important number here. So that 3 tells us it's the third position of that sequence. Okay, so it's the first position, second, third, and fourth. Okay, so our result would be seven. So the ones digit of three raised to 371 power would be seven. Okay, so if the remainder was one, it would have been the first number in the pattern, which was three in this case. If it was a remainder of two, it would have been the second number in the pattern, or nine. If the remainder was three, it would be the third position, which was seven. If the remainder is zero, it's gonna be the last number of the pattern, in this case, one. Okay, so that remainder tells us what position. If it remainder is zero, it's gonna be the last position because it's evenly divided into four in this case. All right, so using those same rules, I want you to try this problem. What is the 275th digit after the decimal point and a repeating decimal 0 0.6295. And remember that a repeating decimal can be 6295, 6295, 6295. So it repeats that pattern forever. Okay, so there's four in that pattern. Okay, so take 275 divided by four and use that remainder to figure out what position it is. All right, did you get it? The answer is nine. All right, so you take the 275 divided by four, that gives you 68.75. And remember, uh, 75 is three fourths. Okay, it's remainder three. Okay, so it's gonna be the third position. So one, two, three. So it's gonna be the nine. All right, so we take a look at the homework problems. So this first one, we have seven to the 126 power. So again, this is too big for the calculator to solve. So here I need to find a pattern, you know, you know, do seven to the first, seven to the second, seven to the third, and so on until you see what the pattern is. And then take the 126 divided by the number in the pattern, how many numbers are in the pattern, and use that remainder to figure out what position is it gonna be? Okay. Same principle applies to this problem. Given today is Tuesday, what day of the week is it 200 days ago? Okay, so how many are in the pattern? So down with a week, so there's seven days in the week, so there's seven in the pattern. So you need to divide that by the 200, and then use that remainder to figure out how many days you know, before Tuesday is gonna be. And this next one, similar to the one we just did, five numbers in a pattern. And we wanna find the 112th digit. Okay, so take the 112 divided by five and use that remainder to find a position. All right, so our next topic is exponents. Okay, so first let's go over the rules of exponents. I have x squared times x to the third Okay, as long as you use the same variable, x, you can add exponents in this case. Okay, so that's gonna be x to the two plus three, or x to the fifth. Okay, so remember, x 
squared is really x times x, and x to the third is x three times. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five x's, so x to the fifth. Now we have x to the eighth divided by x to the fifth. We have division of the same variable. We're going to subtract exponents, so 8 minus 5, or x to the third power. Okay, how this works, you have eight x's on top. And you have five on bottom. Makes the one pair on top and bottom cancel out. And left with three on top. Then I have x to the third raised to the second power. Okay, so it's the same as x to the 3 times 2, or x to the 6th power. So what this really means is x to the 3rd 2 times. Okay, we multiply them, we add exponents in that case, so 3 plus 3, you x to the 6th. So that's what's going on there. Now we also don't want negative exponents. So if we have x to negative 2 power, we want to move it to the other side of the fraction and make it a positive 2 there. Okay, if it started off at the bottom, a negative exponent, move it to the top to make it positive. Okay, and anything to the 0 power is 1. So 5 to the 0 is 1, 100 to the 0 is equal to 1. Now when we're dealing with rational exponents, if we had the fifth root of x squared, it's going to be equal to x. Now the root will go on the denominator, and then the exponent of the x will go on top. So it becomes x to the two-fifths power. Now if I had three halves to negative two, to make it a positive exponent, I can just make it uh, I can switch the numerator and denominator, so it becomes two-thirds to the positive two power. The exponent would apply to the top, so two squared, and the bottom, three squared. Give you four over nine. Two times two, and three times three. If I have something like this, 2 to the x over 8 to the x plus 1 equals 1 over 128. In these type of problems, you want to change the numbers to be all the same base. Okay, so I want to change the 8 to 2 to some power. I want to change that 128 to 2 to some power. Okay, so if I look at 2x and 8 to the x plus 1, 8 can be rewritten as 2 to the third, okay, times you know, x plus 1 and exponent, and just distribute the 3 becomes 2 to 3x plus 3. Okay, so I've got division, same base, 2 on top and bottom. I use the division rules, which is subtract the exponent, so 2 to the x minus the quantity 3x plus 3. Distribute that negative, so it comes 2 to the x minus 3x minus 3. Combine the x term, so 2 to negative 2x minus 3. So that was on the left side. Now on the right side, 1 over 128. 128 is 2 to the seventh power. Okay, if you didn't know that, you just play around with it on a calculator to see what 2 to what power equals 128. Okay, and since it's on the bottom, you know, 1 over 2 to the seventh is equal to 2 to the negative seventh power. So now I have this. Okay, so if this is true, both sides equal the same thing and they're both two to some power, that means the exponents need to equal. So I'm gonna set the exponents equal to each other, negative two x minus three equals negative seven. Okay, then add three to both sides. Negative two equals negative four. And divide both sides by negative two. So x equals two. All right, so anytime you see you know, this kind of setup, you wanna change both numbers so that they're the same uh, base, and then set their exponents equal to each other.
All right, so I want you guys to try this one. Draw positive real values of x. Which of the following expressions is equivalent to x to the 24th over x to the 6th divided by 1 over x squared? All right, good. What answer did you guys get? Did you get uh, k, x to the 20th? All right, so for this one, look at x to the 24th over x to the 6th. Okay, so we need to subtract exponents, so 24 minus 6. It's going to give you 18, so x to the 18th. Then the bottom, 1 over x squared, you can make that x to the negative 2. So now we have x to the 18th divided by x to the negative 2. And that's going to be x to the 18 minus negative 2. Okay, so that's 18 plus 2 to give you 20. So x to the 20th power. Let me look at the homework questions. Somebody when we're multiplying, you know, like terms, the x's go together, the y's go together, and the z's go together. We're multiplying, so we're going to add their exponents together. For this next one, you have to you know, multiply this outer exponent by all the exponents inside the parentheses here, even the 2 and the 8, so 2 becomes 2 to the negative 2, to the third, x to the third becomes x to the negative 6. Okay, you need to do that top and bottom. Move the negative exponents to the other side and make them positive, and then apply your you know, division rules where you subtract the exponents. And it should simplify to one of the answer choices. Now this one, now since it's just all numbers, you just do it in the calculator. You know, you can do parentheses 27 divided by 64 raised to the power of negative 2 divided by 3. Okay, so anytime it's just all numbers, I would just do it directly on the calculator. Okay, in this one, so remember when we have a rational exponent, we can change it to, you know, with a radical. Okay, so if you don't remember, look at the example I had above. So this one we had 27 raised to the n squared power equals 9 raised to the 5n minus 4 power. All right, so we want to get both sides in terms of some base. So, you know, 27, you know, it's 3 to the third power. And 9 is 3 squared. Okay, you know, so make those changes, distribute the 2 and the 3, and then set the exponents equal to each other. So our next section here is scientific notation. Scientific notation is a shorthand way of writing really small numbers or really large numbers. Okay, so we're going to move our decimal point to the first non-zero digit from the left, and then how many places we move the decimal point is going to be the exponent. If the number is greater than 1, you have a positive exponent. If your original number was less than one, then it's going to be a negative exponent. So here we have 250 million. Okay, so first non-zero digit is a two, so it's going to be this point is going to move between the two and the five. And it was originally back here. I moved it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. So it's going to be 2.5 times 10 to the eighth. This next number 0 0.0000089. Okay, first non zero digit is 8 to move it right past there. Okay, I moved it from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. Okay, so it's going to be 8.9. This number is less than 1, so it's going to be a negative exponent, so 10 to the negative 7th power. Okay, you can also solve most of these problems by changing your calculator to scientific mode. So if we take a look at that. So on this, uh, this is the TI-84. If we go to mode, up here I've got normal, psi, and engineering. So scientific notation, the second one here. Move a cursor over it and press enter. Okay, so now it's highlighted. Now if I put in 250 million, 
press enter. It tells me 2.5e to the eighth. That's the same as 2.5 times 10 to the eighth. Now I can do the 0 0.000089. So 8.9 times 10 to the negative seventh. So look at this next example. What is 2.4 times 10 to the third times 3.2 times 10 to the negative fifth? Okay, so again, if it's just numbers, I'll just do it directly on the calculator. So 2.4, and instead of doing times 10, I can just do the E here. So second in the comma, so E3. And then 3.2, E, negative 5, enter. So 7.68 times 10 to the negative 2 power. All right. Okay, so I want you guys to try this problem. The number 0 0.000000000089. Zero is equivalent to which of the following expressions? Okay, so just writing this number in scientific notation. So you can either do it by hand or use a calculator. All right, let me give you a few seconds to try it. All right, did you get it? All right, so the correct answer is B. All right, so we do it by hand. This point needs to be between the eight and seven. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 8.73 times 10 it needs to be a negative exponent, so negative 11. Okay. Otherwise, on the calculator, we're going to do 0 0.000000000. .000000000. Enter, so 8.73 times 10 to negative 11th. So that was scientific notation. So the homework questions. So we get 4.8 times 10 to negative 7 divided by 1.6 times 10 to negative 11th. Here, just to do it uh, you know, correctly, just make sure, just do it on the calculator. It'll give you the correct answer. That's easy enough to do there. This next one in scientific notation, 670 million plus 700 million is equal to, so again, I'll just put that in a calculator, and it'll give me the correct answer. Now this one, it's missing a four here, but, all right, I know this was for homework, but I want you guys to try it, though. I want you guys to try this one, just to see if you get this. So this one you can't do directly on the calculator, because they're trying to solve for x, so it's almost an algebra problem. So I'll give you a few seconds to try this out. All right, so did you solve it? Did you get negative five H? So for this one, you first you wanna multiply out 4.25 times six. It's gonna give you 25.5. Okay, now with the tens, 10 to the two C plus four times 10 to seventh. So here we're gonna add exponents, so 10 to the two C plus four plus seven or 10 to the two C plus 11. Okay, so that's 25.5 times 10 to the two C plus 11 is gonna equal 255. Okay, so in order this left side to equal 255, you need to move this place one spot. So this needs to be 10 to the first, okay. So basically 2c plus 11 needs to equal 1. Subtract 11 from both sides. 2c equals negative 10. Then divide both sides by 2. So c equals negative 5. So that was the end of scientific